If you are Harry Styles, then you definitely have to watch this video. Watermelon sugar, purple, yellow, and red. What's up guys, it's Henry and welcome to my channel and today's video. It's not a vlog today, but I'm going to share a huge tutorial for you guys. This has been requested on TikTok a lot. I know I'm very, very late, like very late, because this trend of this Harry Styles jacket has been going on in July, like all over TikTok, and everybody was doing this cardigan. And now I'm sharing my video, which is absolutely late, but that's not what this video is about. I thought I'm going to do a different jacket inspired by the Harry Styles jacket. This jacket is all about more like in a cute way, more like a girly way and it's obviously not for me. It's a present for my sister. Today's video is all about how I did this jacket. I'm going to show you a close tutorial on how you can recreate this jacket even though if you haven't crocheted in your life before you're gonna learn this with this video I can promise you guys. The materials for this tutorial are very very basic and very simple. All you need is yarn of course. I'm using the, it's, I think it's a German brand, it's Schachenmeier Bravo yarn. It's 50 grams. You can choose any kind of chunky yarn as long as it's chunky. As for the colors of the yarn, I use pink, rosé, light blue, purple, mint, and white. Then I'm using a 5mm hook. You also need a measurement band, scissors, and some wool needles in order to sew the patches together in the end. And that's basically it. First of all, before we start, we want to have like a square patch at the end. So what I'm doing first is I take my yarn and I do a simple knot. I string around the yarn around two fingers and pull the other side of the yarn through and make a knot. Then I put the, my hook through the loop for the first loop and I chain up 19. 19 chains are approximately 10 centimeters. So I chain up 19 by yarning over, pull the yarn through, and this is my first chain, actually. So you do this um, 19 times, and when you are at the end of your 19 chains, you put your hook through the second loop, yarn over, and then pull, pull your yarn through, and yarn over again, and pull your yarn through, and that's your single stitch. You're gonna repeat this process on the second loop, uh, on the next loop. So you pu put your hook through the loop, then you yarn over, you have two loops on your hook, and then you yarn over again, pull your, ho uh, pull your yarn through, and then you have your s second single stitch. You're gonna continue this process until you are at the other end of your first chain. When you're at the end of your first, of your first chain, you chain up one and then you start again your next row with a single stitch again. So this time you put your hook through both loops. Yarn over, pull the yarn through, you have two loops on your hook, then you yarn over again, pull your yarn through and then you have your next single crochet. You're gonna continue this row until you have reached the second row and then you chain up one again and continue this process until you have your whole patch. When you finish up your patch, I'm gonna show you the last row again. You put your hook through, yarn over, and then you have two loops on your, on your hook, and then you yarn over again, single crochet done. And when you have reached the end of your patch, you just chain up one, and then you leave a long axis before you cut it off, and then you cut it off with your scissors, and then you pull your yarn through the chain with your hook. This is how you close the patch. That's like basically it. Um, this is one patch and you have to repeat this several times for all the other patches using different colors each time. Next we have the Hound's Tooth, which is the multicolored patch. This is not a beginner stitch, so if you don't feel comfortable, you can just use the single crochet all the way through of your jacket. So we start by chaining up 19 again. It's like the same process as the other patches for the first row. So you chain up 19, then you do your single crochet the first row, 
and when you have reached the end of your first row it is important to not close your last stitch so when you have two loops on your hook you would like yarn over and pull the yarn through to close the last stitch but this time you introduce your next color which is the pink in my case and you pull the yarn through the two loops having a long axis at the end. This might be a little bit loose at the at first, but you will close it at the end and make it more tight by chaining up one with a new loop, with a new color. Then you turn your work and start the second row with your new color by doing a simple single crochet. Now you have to make sure to take the old thread, the old yarn, which is the mint green one or the mint blue one in my case, with with you to the other side. That's a bit tricky, but you can definitely do this. I can tell you. And the second stitch you're gonna do is be a double crocheting stitch. You just yarn over first, put your hook through the two loops, yarn over, pull it through, then you have three loops on your hook. Then you yarn over again, pull it through, you have two loops on your hook. You yarn over again, pull it through, and you have closed your first double crochet. That's like the very simple double crochet. And then you start over with a single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, all the way through until you have reached the end. When you have reached the end, when you close your double crochet, you make sure to introduce your old yarn by pulling it through and close it by chaining up one. And then you turn your work and you do the whole process again by using um, a single crochet, double crochet, single crochet with your new color, building up your third row. Don't forget to take your other color, which is the rose color in my case, with you on the other side again, so you can introduce it in your fourth row. When you reach the end of your multicolor patch, you close up your last row by chaining up one again, and then cut your axis long enough, and then you close your patch. When you have finished all of your patches, you're going to do the ribbon next. So for this ribbon, you have to measure your ankles and your waistband um, in order to get the right length for your ribbons. And mine was, uh, for my sister, it was 17 centimeters on the ankles and 81 centimeters on the hips, like on the waist. And um, I can tell you that it's very important in order to have a stretchy band at the end and shape the cardigan and shape the puffy sleeves. So if you want to have it like more longer or attach the ribbon as long as you want to have your jacket at the end, then you have more like a loose jacket. But if you want to have recreate this vintage more puffy look, you have to do your ribbon more tight in order to create the shape of the cardigan. So for the ribbon, you just have to chain up 11 for the ankles. Then I do my first single crochet on the first row. And when I have finished the first row, I chain up one. And then instead of going through both loops, I only go through the back loop. I go all the way through my second row, only in the back loop. And when you finish the, the second row, you chain up one again and continue this process all the way through your ribbon. You're gonna continue this process as long as you want to have your ribbon, of course. For my waistband, I decided to have it a bit more wider, so I chained up 13. Now we have all our pieces together, all the ribbons together, and we lay our patches on the floor uh, I can recommend to use like a big space for this to lay all your patches on the floor or on a big table or something like that. And um, you assemble this in this way. For, for the body part, I'm using nine patches for the back part and eight, ten patches, eleven patches, so ten patches and two half patches for the front. So you shape your front by using um, four patches on each side, leaving out the middle part for your neck and of course for the opening of, of your jacket. And then use two patches on the sides for your jacket and one half patch for your, under your armpits. 
and you can just use this kind of pattern here to orientate your arrangement. For these sleeves, you will need 18 patches each sleeve laying around like in three rows. What I can fully recommend is decreasing your patch sizes when you go down to your ankle. So the first 12 patches are like um, the normal 10 centimeters patches, square patches. So I chained up 19 for these, but for the next row, for reaching close to the ankle, I decreased my chain by two. So I only chained up 17 for the next three patches. And for the last three patches, close to your ankle, I only chained up 15. So your patches get a little bit smaller. For the assembling process, I'm using my needle um, to sew the patches together. So you take your two patches and you attach your needle of one of the axes of your patches and then you're going to sew the two loops together. And what I do is I stack up several loops to my needle and then pull the yarn through, which is more like a faster process than just doing each loop separately. At the end, you just tie a knot and um, assemble Maybe you have another axis of your other patch there and you can assemble this by tying a, t a simple double knot. And that's actually it. It's like lots of work. It took me so, so long to attach all the patches together. So don't underestimate this kind of process, but uh, it's definitely gonna worth it at the end. And um, yeah, I did like the back part at first, then the front part, then I discovered that I need more patches for the front part, I added them, then I did the first sleeve, and then the second one, and then I attached the ribbons. For the ribbons, I'm using also the long axis of the ribbon, of course, and attach it. And this, for this process, you have to stretch your ribbon to, in order to attach it to your patches and to your sleeve. So I can fully recommend to use a safety needle for this, when you have attached your ribbon, you close up the sleeve. Sometimes when you assemble the patches, you might have, you, if you forgot about the axis or something like that, and your axis is too, too short for the patch to sew the next patch on. So for in this case, you can simply, for this case, for this case, you can simply attach a new yarn by cutting a long piece of yarn of this kind of color and then tie a knot and then use this axis to sew your patches together. For closing up the sleeve, I attached a new yarn of the ribbon on your ankle and then I sew all the way through to close up your sleeve. I can fully recommend to close your sleeve first and try it on if it's long enough, if it looks good and stuff like that but be careful you also have shoulder pads patches on your body part left which will make your sleeve a little bit longer at the end when you have closed your uh, sleeves you have to attach the sleeve obviously to the body part i figured out that for me it was the best way to close the body part first before i attach the sleeves and then i attach the first sleeve in the end, I attached the other sleeve as well, off camera. So what's only left is the last ribbon, which is going to be up all the sides, building your collar, finishing up the cardigan. So for the last ribbon, you gonna attach your new yarn, however, in which color you wanna do it. I did it in my case in white, and to the end of your waistband of the lower end, the bottom end of your waistband, doing your first single crochet. <laughs> so um, you single crochet all the way up the side, around your collar, and then all the way down the other side to the other end of your waistband. It's like a very, very long single crochet, but you continue this process by chaining up one when you add the end, and you turn your work, and then you single crochet all the way back to the other end. I did a total four rows, it depends on how wide you want to have this last ribbon and um, you can do even more rows but I figured that four rows are like perfect for this kind of cardigan. You can attach buttons as well. I decided to do a bow because I felt like this is very modern and I saw this so many times on TikTok like doing a cardigan with just simply tying a bow to close it and I felt this very like very girly and very cute.
and that's basically it we have created the whole jacket this is like how i've done this jacket i'm very very proud of this jacket i have to say i think it looks very very cool very trendy with all the new pastel colors very cute very girly and i hope my sister likes it at the end and um, if you want to recreate this jacket please tag me or like write me dm on instagram i would be very very happy to see your results and um, i hope you guys like this video like this tutorial feel free to give thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet then please do add me add my channel to your subscription list and if you haven't add me on my social medias yet then feel free to check me out on instagram snapchat Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok, of course. I'm very, very active on TikTok, sharing so many DIY videos, craft videos, all about embroidery and crocheting, of course. Yeah, I hope you guys like this video, and I see you guys in the next video. Bye, I'm out. Have a good day. Ciao.